Welcome at uh, ThinksCon 2017 live from Amsterdam. Uh, we have a brilliant bunch of guests today that we talked to in, uh, in about 10 minute talks. And uh, the first guest today is uh, Yugo Valari. Uh, you're from the Restart Project. Thanks, thanks yeah. for having me. What's the Restart Project? So the Restart Project was started in London as a community initiative, bringing people together with the objective of changing their relationship with electronics starting with repairing products collaboratively. So over the last five years, we worked uh, by the, ourselves and it, with, in collaboration with groups in 10 other countries uh, with over 7,000 people who came to our events and brought products to be repaired, supported by a network of skilled volunteers and reduce their chances of throwing things away that could have a second or a third lease of life and also losing their fear about the fact that electronics can be repaired and should be repaired rather than being put in a way or thrown away, in fact. Because that is the idea. It's, it's about it's recycling, but not, not putting and throwing uh, and electronics away, but repairing them. Well, reusing first and recycling only when a product cannot be repaired ever again. And uh, people often think that the word recycling means that the best possible thing will happen to that device. But because most electronic products have their biggest impact within the manufacturing phase, often about 80% of the overall of environmental impact of a product lays within the manufacturing, then extending the product lifetime as much as possible is the best thing we can do to prevent unnecessary waste and unnecessary new products being manufactured in the first place. So why do we have this problem? Well, the problem is massive because uh, electronic waste is one of the fastest streams of mm -hmm. waste, uh, growing at up to 5% annually, which is a huge amount. And uh, it's not very efficient even when it happens. Mm -hmm. And often uh, the problem that we see uh, is not so much what's portrayed by the media, which is electronic waste in some informal part of Africa, but it happens within our own uh, territory. It's within our own gardens sure. and back gardens yeah. where we hide things from sight, for public sight, and we think that it's not a problem. And we focus on what's the next best gadget that we can get. Yeah. And so so what, what, uh, what caused this problem? How did we get there? Well, it's become so easy to manufacture products at low cost that uh, it's easy for a company to think about the next product that they're going to make rather than supporting a product uh, for its current lifetime. And also in order to uh, make it cheaper to, to produce and to put products to market. Uh, manufacturers have taken a lot of shortcuts and made products that are not easy to take apart and therefore to repair. And increasingly, which connects very much with the theme of ThingsCon, products that are connected, so connected devices, all kinds of IoT uh, products as well, depend on software as well as hardware maintenance. And so we see a massive growth in the number of products that are brought to market and at the same time, uh, less chance that the product will be supported over a long period of time. And if you look at all kinds of products coming out of crowdfunding campaigns, there's some very famous ones that less than four years after winning a massive crowdfunding campaign no longer even exist. No. The company is no longer there. No. There are no spare parts available at no. all. And even if you have a functioning one, uh, most likely the app that it came with is not compatible with uh, the current operating system no. you're using, or it might no longer be secure. And uh, so there is a lot of questions around how long will a product that yeah. a maker is thinking about producing now will last, whether they're able to support it for a sufficient amount of time, and who is going to pay for this additional support if it's needed. Yeah, if it is more expensive, because nobody knows, because never, nobody really thought about it. But um, um, you're a big group already. Uh, I'm sure you don't want to spend the rest of your life repairing things. Uh, uh, you probably want to have corporations to be involved and to change the way they produce and everything. Uh, is that working? 
So we uh, know that community repair is just one small part of this issue, and uh, it helps raising the awareness. But we collect data about all of the repairs that our network uh, does, and we want to know what kind of products people are trying to repair and what are the issues they're facing that cannot be solved. So what is the type of design flaw in a product that's causing less and less uh, repairability mm -hmm. success rate? And we're doing this at scale in collaboration with multiple other organizations, mm -hmm. including the Repair Found Cafe Foundations in the Netherlands, the Fix It Clinic in the United States, I Fix It and Anstiftung Foundation. In Germany, we created an open uh, repair alliance, which just released uh, open repair data uh, standard, which aims at multiplying the amount of information that we can provide to push manufacturers and regulators to really act on the most obvious changes that could increase the durability of products. So we don't just want to push manufacturers alone, uh, big manufacturers, we want to inspire smaller manufacturers and makers that can already today start doing things differently. And we want ultimately regulation to change to make by default some of these choices already made for manufacturers who want to produce products that reach the market, at least in Europe. And that's quite difficult because it's a totally different way of, uh, of thinking about production and everything. Just, are, are you already talking to the European uh, Commission or are you uh, engaged with, uh, with, with manufacturers already? Are, are there ideas on how to do this? We, we are taking part in uh, discussions uh, and of course in, at the European Union level but this is a massive problem and there's a lot of people tackling it in different ways. There's discussion around early obsolescence of products, uh, which is about whether there are um, actually cases in which a product is made in a way that will not last as long as it was supposed to. Uh, and there's simply more analysis around uh, uh, some design flows of a product, uh, whether the battery is glued to the rest of the device, or whether proprietary tools are required to take apart a product, whether adhesive is used in places where it wasn't necessary, um, is, is tackled by changes in regulation. So this will take a long time. And of course, manufacturers have a strong voice in these debates because uh, they can lobby very effectively. But also, we believe that it's important to bring together communities and citizens in this conversation because often they are frustrated as much as the independent repair businesses that want to continue to do their work but often they're priced out by extremely expensive spare parts or by lack of information about how yeah. to provide uh, yeah. uh, repair services. Yeah. So um, you have all these examples of how things are not working the way they should. Uh, do you, as last question, do you have an example of a manufacturer or a product that does a perfect job in uh, making a sustainable product for the future? So there isn't a perfect example about anything because the problem is at an ecosystem level problem. So there, there are manufacturers that make spare parts available for their products, but perhaps the very same manufacturer fail at providing sufficient software support to their devices. So we're not trying to either name and shame any specific company, nor to support one that's doing something good but might be very behind in other areas. So sure, but sometimes it's nice to have an example of a company that is, or an organization, or a smart startup that is doing it uh, better than the others. Say, hey, it is possible. Well, I think everyone can strive to uh, make an informed decision when they're buying a product. Mm -hmm. not just basing on the brand, uh, but actually asking themselves some questions. So is that product supported uh, right now in mm -hmm. their own country? So will they be able to access spare parts for that product if it breaks? Does that company has a uh, good track record of supporting uh, the software development uh, of that specific type of product for a long period of time? And is it possible, a uh, third important question, to purchase a perfectly fine second-hand version of a product already on the market? So at times it's not about supporting the next brand new product, but it's about making the most of what's already on the market that someone no longer needs. So I'm not going to give you an answer that's there's Damn. one product that you should go for, 
but we're aiming for inspiring people to answer their questions. And at times, you make compromises. And you need to be aware of the kind of compromises you make. And so that if you know that you're buying a product that doesn't uh, aim to be sure. super repairable, but at least it has good software support, you take your own risk and perhaps you protect it. Oh yeah, one piece of advice I'll give, particularly for smartphone users, which is at this point almost everyone, the best thing you can do is one, keep using the one you have as much as you can, and two, make sure you protect the one you have so that you're less likely to break it. Because at, no matter what, if you avoid breaking a screen or other parts, you can ensure a longer life for that product. Very wise words, although before closing, uh, I'd love to know what kind of a phone you are using now. Uh, I am using a second-hand uh, uh, Google phone because it's likely to obtain not just good software support from Google, but more importantly, because it's a fairly common Android device, it means that the open source, the free and open source community is already supporting that phone and will continue to support it for a long period of time. Perfect. You walk to walk. Thank you very much. Thank you. So this was the first interview we were having here from Amsterdam at the ThinksCon 2017 conference. Stay tuned. We will be back with a lot of other interviews and see you later.